Hayao Miyazaki is one of the greatest filmmakers to ever exist. He is undeniably the most consistent, and every single one of his 11 feature length films is a masterpiece filled with the joy and wonder of everything beautiful in this world. Though often magical in setting, his worlds and characters never feel false or unrealistic, and even though his works are made to be enjoyed by even the youngest of children, he never pulls his punches in depicting every aspect of humanity and the serious human problems we face every day. His works are understandably extremely popular, both on his home turf in Japan and abroad, with the English dubs being done by some very expensive names. They're so popular that many people who tell you they don't watch anime will also tell you they love Spirited Away, and many people that Yahoo! anime will tell you Miyazaki is what made them love it, and because of this, his films have been greatly responsible for the growing acceptance of anime into mainstream culture. So why has no one watched his TV show? I don't have a PhD in the history of animated film, but I have seen every film released by Studio Ghibli that isn't earwig. And while I was surprised to find the relatively hidden Castle Cagliostro that is Miyazaki's incredible first film a few years back, learning about the existence of Future Boy Conan, which may be the greatest work he's ever created, felt like I was an archaeologist unearthing some rare lost artifact only whispered about in shadowy cabals. Much like an ancient relic, when compared to modern anime, the instinctual reaction of many viewers on seeing the footage of this show is going to be, this show is old and sucks balls, but I can assure you without a doubt in my mind, that it is as worthwhile and fulfilling as an experience as any of Miyazaki's later works. Essentially, it is Studio Ghibli, the TV show. Even though I don't intend to spoil the plot, I will be showing footage, and as I'm making this video with the intention of convincing you to watch this show, and because it's a beautiful grand and sprawling adventure, if you're interested in watching it already, I'd much rather you close this video now and got to experience the whole thing completely blind just like I did. To put it bluntly, Future Boy Conan is fucking amazing. It follows the titular Conan and his exploits in a post-apocalyptic world that has been severely flooded with water after huge moth-like planes completely messed up the earth with electric magnetic weapons 20 years previously. And it's also the happiest and most uplifting TV show I've watched in all my life. I think this juxtaposition is no more well represented than the opening of the show. Every single episode starts with a grim retelling of the global war that split the continents of the earth apart and sank them into the ocean. We see cities full of people trying to evacuate and run for their lives, while the moth planes fill the sky, and we watch as all of those lives are instantly obliterated. We see Conan's ancestors board a rocket ship to escape the earth only for it to be damaged and fall back on itself. Then the screen fades to black, and the most wonderfully positive duet anime intro starts playing. We see fish swimming in the blue sea around the destroyed ruins of a city, whilst Conan and Lana sail a boat under the bright blue sky, with huge smiles on their faces. The lyrics to the opening are literally, Swim and break through the waves, because you love the earth so much because the dawn is so beautiful. Wow. Like many Miyazaki protagonists, Conan is filled with such a pure-hearted niceness and determination that absolutely obliterates the setting he finds himself in. No matter what adversity he goes through, and he goes through a lot, he never gives up hope, and will always try anything he can to help the people he cares about. It may seem unusual to have such a positive show set in a post-apocalyptic world, but I couldn't help but think that its depiction of both the good and the bad is a much more genuine representation of what humans are really like than the relentlessly depressing situations we are all too familiar with when it comes to post-apocalyptic media, or ever increasingly, media as a whole. Conan is also Superman. It's never explained why he's so fucking badass, but in the first episode he lifts a shark that must weigh a metric ton directly over his head like it's nothing and it's probably the least impressive thing he does. He can stay underwater for a length of time that is genuinely frightening, and he also has the toe strength and dexterity of a ballet dancing monkey crossed with a lifetime supply of steroids, 
something which is apparent in the relaxed nature of the horrific pose he strikes on the show's promo material. Disregarding the similar nature of the themes and characterization in the show, the beauty of its artwork and sheer attention to detail marks it as Studio Ghibli the TV show from a mile away. Just like their films, I could pick any scene or frame at random from the 12 hour plus runtime of this show, and it will be a breathtaking masterpiece of beauty and composition. The amount of work that has so clearly went into every aspect of this show made me feel physically sick at times, and it's one of the only pieces of media where I can feel the intention of the creators behind every moment. Each location, plot point, and piece of machinery has a thoughtful, logical design behind its existence, and I can see Miyazaki surrounded by his animators explaining why each and everything has to be exactly the way it is, forcing his vision to be realised through them. I mean, is there anything more Miyazaki than a kids TV show where the characters smoke? Every moment I watched it, I felt more and more astounded at just how well put together every shot was. The mebus esque simplicity and cleanliness of the line work coupled with the incredible backgrounds tied together by the tiny dots of dust and faint hazy whiteness of the plastic cell sheets gave me the exact same feeling as the warm crackle on an old vinyl record. I could see the camera recording each new frame as the cells were adjusted and moved accordingly and the cigarette and coffee strewn desks of the underpaid overworked 1970s animators whose meticulous labours I was enjoying so much. I could feel the waves of serotonin secreting in my brain as each new perfect moment played out on screen, something I haven't felt since watching Evangelion, a show which I couldn't help but draw parallels to in terms of quality and presentation. Much like Evangelion, or perhaps more relevantly, Miyazaki's solo and intensely underappreciated manga version of Nausicaa, Conan benefits greatly from having room to breathe. Although the plot moves along at a brisk jog, and almost every episode is punctuated by a classic anime cliffhanger, its existence as a TV show in its own right, and not a manga adaptation or a film, gives it extra time to allow for slow quiet scenes that draw the viewer into its world so much more effectively than ceaseless dialogue and action. Even disregarding that art critic crap, its 26 episodes allow for so much more shit to happen, and Conan's adventure is filled with twists and turns, with longer and more fulfilling character arcs and interactions, as well as more action, more laughs, and more gorgeous wallpaper worthy artwork. All of Miyazaki's films are a masterpiece in their own right, but with a runtime over six times the length of the average Ghibli film, when put side by side with a glorious globetrotting gladventure like Conan, they seem almost rushed in comparison. To put it in perspective, when considering Miyazaki's directional contribution to the world, the runtime of every one of his films put together is approximately 20.46 recurring hours, and the runtime of Future Boy Conan is around 12. More than a third of everything he has ever directed is contained within this relatively unknown TV show. I say relatively oh. unknown, but there are many places where Conan's influence and legacy are apparent. If you've played Wind Waker, the premise might seem familiar, because you have essentially played Future Boy Conan the video game, and I'm not exaggerating. Even the single light guiding Link up the Forsaken Fortress is the same. For an even more direct reference than Wind Waker, the TV show itself is shown in the anime about making anime, Keep Your Hands Off Aizuken, where it is the show that inspires protagonist Asakusa to make anime, and its concept heavy logic and detail focused nature plays a huge role in the film club's creations. It also gave me insane deja vu when I saw the same scenes in Conan for real, and I genuinely thought I had watched it as a child. Then we have Ghibli itself, where Conan's nature is a precursor to everything that would follow is the most apparent. Intricate machinery with a focus on planes and boats, acrophobia being played for laughs, weapons of mass destruction from a time long ago, the importance of living in harmony with nature and those around us, and morally ambiguous villains that we feel sympathetic towards. All of these staples of Miyazaki's wonderful career started in this glorious, continent-crossing, 12-hour masterpiece of a TV show. Thank you to Hayao Miyazaki and everyone at Nippon Animation that worked on Future Boy Conan for making one of the greatest pieces of media ever created.
Thank you to Conan, Lana and Jimshi for bringing back my faith in humanity and warming my heart. And thank you for watching. Cheers. Have a blessed even a thin summer. <laughs>